Hey guys, new video today, and today we're taking a look at this thing. This is a, well, it's called an LCD desoldering station. And the reason I bought it, well, I make a lot of prototypes like, uh, uh, is it going to, oh, yeah, there was stuff on there. Okay. Uh, like, for instance, this guy. And there's a lot of non-electronic components on there, such as these uh, screw terminals or fuse holders and stuff like that. And once you make a few of those, let's not go into how many I make, um, well, costs start racking up. So I thought, okay, let's invest in a desoldering station and see how well that works. And maybe I can recoup some of those components. Okay, let's quickly take a look at what came in the box. First of all, there is the, uh, well, the main unit, and it has a main housing made out of plastic. Then it has some uh, controls in the front, which we'll, uh, well, we'll look at it later. Uh, a connection for the handle that you use, and a air uh, hose connection. I'll, I'll show you that later. I haven't connected it yet myself, but I figured out what it was for. Then there is a normal style plug in the back where you can connect your power cable. And well, that has a fuse inside and it says it can consume up to, can I show you that better? I'm not sure, up to 90 watts and the fuse is 3.15 amps. So as I said, it comes with a normal uh, power connector, which, well, I have lots of those. And, well, of course, they sent me completely the wrong model power supply, and then they include one of these uh, converter thingies. Yeah, I don't like using those. Um, so, I'll just use a power cable of my own. And, well, as I said, I have lots of these. So, that's fine. Um, housing is made out of plastic, and, well, looks okay. So, housing aside, it comes with uh, this little guy and this is a rubber gasket and this is a screw cap basically to ma make the hole uh, fit the tube for the suction line and it comes with these little white pads and let me show you this one so it has these white pads those are filter pads for in the handle I'll show you that part in a little bit and it also has two extra nozzles because they'll probably wear out over time and as you can see one of the filter pads was also in the base unit so we have replacements for those two um, if it ever gets clogged we have these little yeah I need to focus we have these little pins with which you can unclog the nozzle basically and then it comes with a stand and this stand you can you know put together like this comes with one of those sponges you just add water to and then it swells up and you can use that to clean the tip and then it comes with the uh, well the handle itself basically and uh, as you can see here it already has one of the tips attached and what it will do in theory is that we can suck up the solder like that um this has a uh, a nice it's a nice clicky button Anyway, um, it comes with a glass tube on there, which will hold the solder residue. And here it is a little uh, clip or safety switch. I don't know. Let me show you on the top cam. You can basically click it like that. It jumps back and then you can remove the tube. And oh, let me get that. Yeah. And as you can see, it has one of the filter pads in there and then uh, a metal plate uh, to basically keep that filter pad in place. And I'm thinking the suction will go from here and well, that will create the vacuum. And well, there's of course also a manual. Uh, it has English and it's actually pretty decent English and a Chinese part, which I don't understand anything of. Let me put it back together and then let's try it out. Okay. I uh, just recorded a part because there was something rattling inside. I took it somewhat apart. Uh, there's some uh, top cam shots, but my main camera tur didn't turn out to be rolling. But there, there were just some little plastic pieces. And because of the, the hose connections and the pump inside, I didn't really want to disconnect it any further. So let's uh, see how this all goes together. 
first uh, we need to take this little cap and the gasket put them inside of each other and then just screw it on or at least I think because I've never done this before either so okay then let's take the little stand oh one good thing uh, I saw while uh, poking around a little bit inside is that there is an actual earth wire connected from the terminal in the back to this metal one here up front so that that's always a good sign okay let's uh, put that in there okay so there's two wires coming off of here one is for the electrical part because you know it needs to get hot and actually desolder something and then there is the second one which is just well it's just a hose so i'm guessing oh, um jesus okay i'm guessing that just goes on here okay that uh, seems to be pretty snug. Well, there is already a nozzle on the machine, so that should do. It is, however, closed, uh, but I think once it heats up, it'll uh, suck the solder in automatically. Uh, let me try and get everything a little bit into the shot. So I'm going to put this one over there. Okay, let's turn it on. Okay, it says temperature set 160 and it's uh, heating. Makes a bit of a buzzing noise. It buzzes every time the temperature rises. Okay, so the unit came set to 160 degrees. And let's see if we can, uh, yeah, we can uh, move that up. Oh, there we go. I don't know. Let's try 240. Okay. It reached out pretty quickly. And, um, yeah. Uh, I guess uh, first thing to do is try and desolder something. Let's uh, try these uh, big terminals over here. Let me focus this on there. Although I'll be blocking that camera mostly. Um, so... <laughs> okay oh yeah uh, this uh the nozzle was blocked before and now it's well you can't really see it on that camera but now it's open screw terminals and see if those work Okay, I was able to get this one off, so that's at least something, um, but it's a lot harder than I hoped for, and, um, well, I can barely get the nozzle to fit over these pins, and you need a good seal to suck all the solder out of there, so let alone I can do these. Now that I've tried it out a little bit, let me try and do this row and see if that works. Okay, that worked. Cool. Okay, uh, let's see here. What do we hear? Okay, there's some uh, screw terminals on here. I'd like to have some more screw terminals. Let's see if that works.
Okay, let's see. Okay, that's one screw, screw terminal down. All right, there's a level shifter on here. Now that's not a mechanical com component, so you have to watch out with the heat. Let's turn it down a little bit. It was still on 410. Let's go to uh, 350. And let's see if we can take out that um, temperature sensor and the level shifter. Let's see, the temperature sensor is over here. It's really tiny. Those pins are too tiny to get a good seal, I think. Okay, this temperature sensor is a no. Okay, let's try the level shifter. That looks pretty okay. Uh, oh, okay. This is going to be a challenge getting it out. Can I push it out? I actually can. And there we go. Okay. Nice. One level shifter salvaged. Well now, conclusion time. As you saw, I stumbled along while learning this thing, but once I discovered that you can actually change the nozzles, and they included several different nozzles, things got a lot, lot better. At first, with the default nozzle, uh, getting like uh, these uh, screw terminals, let me, let me show you up close. Yeah, so screw terminals, no problems. Um, things like pin headers, all fine, but anything bigger than that, I couldn't get desoldered because, well, I just couldn't get the nozzle over it and get a good seal. But as I said, it turns out that it, they actually included three nozzles. And after that, I could get out these big screw terminals perfectly well, and even these little fuse holders although those are still a little bit of a challenge because of the the way their pin is shaped but in the end well look at the board it's empty or well rather empty from through hole components but of course that's what the desoldering gun is for so what is my verdict well once you get used to it a little bit and you use the right tip that really helps um, it works perfectly well. I think the device is an excellent device. Uh, the person using it just needs to learn a little bit how to use it. But once you've got the hang of it, I mean, I got, uh, I got, oops, I got all these, uh, yeah, okay, whatever. I got all these screw terminals here and, uh, I got all these screw, t these screw terminals and I got a lot, bunch of fuse holders and well, as I said, basically the board is empty. So final verdict of the machine is that it actually worked quite well. Now, is it a good financial investment to get one? Well, it depends what you're desoldering. These plugs go up for about 20 cents a piece. So with a little bit of desoldering, I've easily saved like a buck, buck and a half. Uh, same for the fuse holders. Those are also 10 to 20 cents a piece. So just spending a few hours I can get some of those back and well that's decent but when you start talking about things like uh, for instance this dc dc converter or or this one i think this one is about three four bucks and uh for instance the level shifter i desoldered from an old prototype uh those also go for 50 cents a piece things start adding up so if you do a lot of prototyping like me I think, well, let's call it break-even. It, it's not going to pay for itself very quickly, 
But if you sometimes have time and want to do desolder these things, I think it can uh, get its own value. Value-wise, they're about 100 bucks, but then you do get a decent machine. I t actually tested continuity with a multimeter and that verified perfectly well. And everything you need is included, including these little sticks. And well, these little sticks also turned out to be important because after a while, the machine seemed to lose suction for some reason. And while, uh, well, moving this thing in and out, uh, it actually got a lot of crud out there and that made it work perfectly well again. And they include some spare materials like the extra tips, although those are a different size and the, the filter sponges or thingies. And well, all in all, it's a complete kit. And I think the machine itself works perfectly well. Uh, just, you know, I don't know if you're going to need it or get the money out of it. If you do a lot of stuff, if you make a lot of mistakes, um, it might be. So I'll have it listed in my tools and equipment page and I'll have a link down in the description. And uh, well, thanks for stumbling along with me and uh, trying this thing out. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye bye.